For this barn door project, we converted a space at the end of our kitchen into a closet, as shown here. The decision was made to use single track bypass barn doors to enclose the closet space. Jumping ahead, here are the finished barn doors. Notice the right hand door overlaps the left hand door which is characteristic of single track bypass barn doors. You lose a nominal six inches of opening space because of the door overlap. Here is another view with the left hand door open. And another view with the right hand door open. To see how this project unfolded, and how to make the doors keep watching. We started by defining the closet area with blue painter's tape. At the same time of creating this closet, we also installed a new water heater, but on a platform such that the closed dryer vent hose could be routed underneath the water heater and to the outdoors. We added closet flooring, a three-quarter inch plywood. The flooring outside the closet area was going to be a laminate, and we didn't want laminate in this closet space. Also shown are the first two-by-fours used to frame the closet space. To open up the entire kitchen floor area for the laminate flooring installation, the kitchen range and refrigerator were placed on dollies and rode, rolled into the closet area. And also here, you can see more of the closet space framing. To continue, a 2 inch by 10 inch board was leveled and face nailed to the closet framing with the bottom of this board 82 inches from the floor. This board was then supported by jack studs at each end. We made our opening width to be 8 feet less 3 inches to allow for 1.5 inches of overlap for each barn door in the opening. A 1 inch by 4 inch by 8 foot board was then centered in the opening and attached flush with the bottom of the 2 by 10 board. We drilled four holes in each four-foot metal rail, holes just below the center line. Then to fasten the rails, we drew a line down the center length of the one-half inch by four inch by eight-foot board. The rails were positioned on this line and the rail holes were marked as were the ends of the rails. After pilot holes were drilled, the rails with spacers were installed using 5 16 inch star head screws. And while completely unnecessary, we mocked up the two doors out of 2 by 4s and placed them on the rail to check the closet openings. The opening was then drywalled with half inch drywall and the one half inch by 4 inch by 8 foot board was taped and textured as well. Be sure to mark the holes for the rails when drywalling so they don't disappear. Golf tees work well. Here is the finished opening with the rails installed and the closet area items in place. Here is a detail of a left rail showing the use of 5 16 inch star head screws instead of lag bolts and the end stop which is one quarter inch star head screw fitted with a rubber sleeve. This end stop screw came from a Lowe's small parts drawer for furniture parts. This end stop requires you to drill and tap a quarter inch 20 thread hole but only once you have the doors in position and have defined the end stop. Notice the rail holes are just below the center to make sure the roller wheel doesn't touch the spacers. Another rail view and end stop 
The 516 star head screws are also available at Lowe's. They are screwed in the 2 inch by 10 inch header board through the drywalled 1 half inch by 4 inch by 8 foot board that you marked in a previous step. Do not screw into just drywall because the drywall will fail because of the weight of the doors. Another view from underneath. The 2 by 10 board has a 2 by 4 stiffener, which also created the overall opening of 5 and a half inches. Assuming you have created your opening, you now want to make the doors. This is where you start. Screw one of the roller pieces, upper hole, 1.5 inches from the end of the 2 by 4, and then add the second screw as shown. Take this piece to the mounted rail. Place the 2x4 roller on the rail and cut the 2x4 length to give you 3 quarters inch at the bottom of the 2x4. The resulting length of this 2x4 will be the height of your doors. For our project this was exactly 81 inches. This is an 8 foot rail system so the doors will each be 4 feet plus 3 inches, the width of the roller size, for a total of 51 inches wide. Whatever door size you are using, you add 3 inches to each door width assuming your roller is 3 inches. To make the doors, we had a convenient OSB floor where we could make a guide. The top 2x4 board was exactly 51 inches and the side boards were a nominal 6 feet. These 2x4s were screwed into the OSB and then made absolutely square top and bottom. The door baseboards were 1x8x81 inches, remembering the 81 inches is the length of each door that was calculated in a previous step. For our 51 inch doors, we place 6 1 by 8 by 81 inch boards in the door frame and then measure the remainder as being a nominal 8 inches. This remainder was divided by 2 and then a table saw was used to trim 2 more 1 by 8s as the end pieces between the full size boards, which filled the frame to the desired 51 inches wide. The leftover pieces when cutting the last two 1x8 boards were used for the diagonal pieces which will be shown shortly. Here are the completed door base boards which are now blocked into position by adding another 2x4 board at the bottom end. The edge boards were 1x6s trimmed to surround the 1x8 base boards which included a centered cross piece as shown by the blue tape. Then everything was glued down and nailed with an 18 gauge 1 and 1 quarter inch nail from a nail gun. Shoot the nails at different angles to create a strong connection for the glue. The final door strength comes from the glue and not the nails. So use the best available wood glue. Yes, the nail gun leaves tiny holes where the nails were shot into the boards but we didn't care about this and once the doors were coated these nails were barely noticeable. The diagonal pieces were then added and nailed and glued down to finish the door. The door was left overnight untouched to let the glue become strong. We positioned the top roller screw hole 1.5 inches from the top and 1.5 inches from the side of each door. Since the door had a diagonal pattern, we made sure the door roller was mounted correctly. Pilot holes were drilled, and then the roller was attached with 1.5 inch 5 16 leg screws. Both door rollers were attached in this manner. Once the rollers were attached, we put the door on the rail and made sure it was all was well before continuing to coat the door and making a second door. 
Next, we hung both doors and sketched the door positions at the bottom with both doors level up and down and in a closed position. This was the first step in adding the door guides, which were attached to the floor. Added to the sketch the outline of the piece for mounting the door guides and the hole locations for the door guides. While the doors are one and a half inch thick, the guide spacing for each door is one and one three quarters inch, and the guide to door surface on each guide had a Velcro piece, piece the fuzzy part, to prevent the metal guide from damaging the door surface. Also shown are the star head screws used to attach the guides to the floor. These screws have a lower profile than lag bolts. This is important because the door must pass over the floor guide bolt and the configuration that we use. Because our floor was a laminate, we had to cut out a piece of the laminate to allow a three-quarter inch plywood piece to be installed in its place for mounting the guides. Here is the vibrating tool bought at Harbor Freight used to cut away the laminate on the red lines of the sketch. Note the whole positions for the guides were marked with red dots. With the laminate now cut away, a three-quarter inch flooring piece was mounted in the opening and then coated to match the rest of the closet flooring. We left a gap around this three-quarter inch flooring piece to allow for laminate expansion and contraction. Do not fasten the guides directly on laminate flooring. Returning to the sketch to the three corners flooring piece, pilot holes were drilled in the red dots after which the sketch was removed and the door guides installed. The door guides look like this. Only one door is shown here, the outside door. The inner door had a similar door guide installed. Another view of the door guides and the Velcro pieces used to protect the finish on the doors. Here is a view of the rail and the door rollers with the left hand door open, that is the rollers are touching. Now the finished doors with the left hand door open and the right hand door open. Finally, both doors installed in the rails and positioned in the door guides. A simple door handle was installed in each door to finish the project.